Over the last five years, very simply, the best pitcher in baseball. And Jerry Blevins tweeted, I know Shohei is a unicorn, but Jacob deGrom is the best baseball player on the planet. This quick, one, two coming. He struck him out. Nine in a row for Jacob deGrom. In just nine seasons, Jacob deGrom has built quite the legacy. In fact, he's on a prestigious list of only seven pitchers to have an ERA plus of 150 or higher in their first nine seasons. Players of this caliber don't reach free agency often, which made him a franchise altering acquisition for the Texas Rangers, a team searching for their first playoff berth since 2016. However, this deal comes with great risk. DeGrom has only made 26 starts in the past two seasons due to injury, and he's set to turn 35 this year. Nonetheless, this signing represents only a fraction of the amount of money this team has spent on free agents recently. In the past two years, the Rangers have committed $828.2 million on free agents, the most of any team in the league. Even if they don't make the playoffs this year, the Rangers seem to have a long-term plan but it's quite the risky experiment. To understand why they're building their team this way, let's head back to 2021. In 2021, the Rangers ended the season 60-102, and their worst record in a 162-game season since 1973. With the trades of Lance Lynn, Kyle Gibson, and Joey Gallo, among others, this team had hit the reset button. Rangers GM Chris Young said the team planned to be active in free agency with the goal of surrounding the next wave of minor league talent with veteran players. At the time, the Rangers farm system was ranked as the 11th best in the league, and their projected 2022 payroll was non-existent. So with a star-studded free agent class, this was the perfect time for the Rangers to make an aggressive push towards building for the future. We're going to be discussing players in every category, every position, and every area in the market. There's nobody that we're going to rule out because of a price tag. A quote by President of Baseball Operations, John Daniels. Now, this isn't completely abnormal for the Rangers. This is the same team that gave Alex Rodriguez a $250 million contract in 2000 and drastically increased payroll in the early to mid 2010s. Although they hadn't given anyone a three plus year contract since Shin Su Chu in 2013. Well, imagine the shock of Rangers fans when they saw the news the team had signed starting pitcher John Gray to a four-year deal. Not necessarily because they signed a player to a four-year deal, but because this news came only a few hours after the announcement of infielder Marcus Simeon signing a seven-year deal. Then, less than 24 hours later, the Rangers shattered their franchise record contract with the acquisition of shortstop Corey Seager to a 10-year, $325 million deal. Still, in order to build a contending team, the Rangers need to avoid the same mistakes they made with A-Rod. When Rodriguez signed ahead of the 2001 season, they were coming off a 71-win year. Despite having some quality players like Yvonne Rodriguez, Rafael Palmero, and Frank Catalanato, they stayed well below 500 for the next three seasons. After that third season, A-Rod was traded to the Yankees. According to John Daniels, who began his Rangers front office career during this time, the contract wasn't the problem. There wasn't a real plan in place to surround Rodriguez with the talent to succeed, not through free agency, trades, nor the farm system. When fan favorite Joey Gallo was traded mid-season in 2021, there had been little progress on a contract extension after the trade, John Daniels said if a player based on their contractual status is not going to be around when the perceived championship window opens, it's more beneficial to trade them rather than letting them walk in free agency. In short, when you talk about rebuilding, there can't be any half measures. It's about consistently following a specific plan. If the Rangers signed just one of these three players, it would have been a half measure like with A-Rod. It's like how the Rockies signed Chris Bryant despite not having a clear long-term plan. At least when the Padres signed Manny Machado, they had the league's number one farm system. There was a clear plan there, and it's finally paying off. For the Rangers, it wasn't about finding a player to be the final piece to a contender. It's about creating a foundation that launches them to where they want to be. So, who exactly were the Rangers getting with these three players? Let's start with John Gray. As a former Colorado Rocky, he dealt with the problem every Rockies pitcher endures, pitching half your games at Coors Field. Not only do the Rockies have the league's highest home ERA, many players have said how playing in Denver's thin air impacts adjustments throughout the whole season. 
Hence one reason why Gray sometimes struggled on the road. Even with this and his injury history in mind, the solid ERA+, plus, FIP, and strikeout rate suggested that leaving Coors Field permanently could unlock a new level of performance. Overall, he's a veteran with intriguing upside on a fair contract. Now, let's talk about the two hitters. At their best, Seager and Simeon are MVP caliber players. Before 2019, Simeon was a consistent average shortstop. Then in 2019, he drastically increased his offensive output and repeated the same type of production in 2021, placing third in the AL MVP race in both years. In fact, between 2019 and 2021, Simeon had the league's highest B war and tied with Mookie Betts for the fifth highest F war. Also, in 2021, Simeon moved over to second base, where he excelled defensively. He showed a willingness to continue playing at this position if the team signed another shortstop, which they did with Corey Seager. A former number one prospect with multiple all-star appearances and a World Series MVP, the 27-year-old Seager exhibited talents rarely seen at the shortstop position. Since 1954, only five shortstops have had a 130 OPS plus in their first seven seasons. Alex Rodriguez, Nomar Garcia Parra, Hanley Ramirez, Fernando Tatis Jr., and Corey Seager. Unfortunately, Seager has dealt with long-term injuries in his career. It's a risky deal, but there's no perfect player who's immune from injuries. What matters is he's shown to be an elite shortstop throughout his career, so why not take the risk? As for Simeon, his track record is less certain than Seager's, but he has a clear desire of wanting to play 162 games with no days off. This work ethic and positive reputation is a perfect addition to a clubhouse set to add many prospects in the coming years. Overall, there's risks in all of these signings, but these three represent the start of a new era for the Rangers, one that continues through a top-rated farm system and possibly some more big signings. Still, the 2022 Rangers weren't expected to make the playoffs, but I don't think anyone could have predicted how bad they'd actually be. The 2022 Rangers ended the year 68 and 94, as both manager Chris Woodward and president of baseball operations John Daniels were fired mid-season. This led to the surprise hiring of World Series winning manager Bruce Bochy. Certainly a massive shakeup, but I wonder what would have happened if the team actually played to their expected record of 77 and 85. This difference of negative nine wins was the largest of any team last season. Expected win-loss records are based on the averages of runs scored and runs allowed. The Rangers allowed more runs than they scored, so it makes sense why they finished under 500. But the difference wasn't too dissimilar to teams like the Diamondbacks, Red Sox, and White Sox. Yet, the Rangers had the worst record in this group. There's two notable reasons for this. Their terrible second half and historically bad record in one-run games, a record that's almost inexplicable. While the Rangers tied for the sixth most blown saves, their bullpen certainly wasn't bad. Also, the batters weren't terrible in high leverage situations, so some positive regression may be in store for 2023. As for the starting pitching, if the Rangers didn't sign Martin Perez, it would have been an absolute disaster. John Gray dealt with some nagging injuries, but overall, he had a solid season. Although, with whom the Rangers signed in the offseason, Gray is likely set for a spot in the back end of the rotation in 2023. Of course, they signed Jacob deGrom and re-signed Martin Perez for another year. Perez was one of the biggest surprises of the 2022 season, as he turned into one of the league's best ground ball pitchers. In fact, among the top five ground ball starting pitchers, Perez had the lowest barrel rate, hard hit rate, and threw the least number of pitches categorized as meatballs. A healthy a healthy trio of DeGrom, Perez, and Gray has potential on its own, but remember the philosophy no half measures. They signed Andrew Heaney and Nathan Eovaldi, two mid-rotation starters with some injury risk. Still, these two, along with DeGrom, adequately addressed the team's poor walk rate from 2022. Overall, the team addressed their biggest needs in the rotation, they should have a decent bullpen, and they positioned themselves for prospects like Owen White, Jack Leiter, Brock Porter, and Kamar Rocker to take over in a few seasons. Still, this plan isn't foolproof, as prospects, notably pitching prospects, are far from a sure thing. Nonetheless, what matters most is there's a long-term plan.
The Rangers just need some luck on their side. Also, real quick, a name to keep an eye out for this year is Cole Reagans. Last year as a rookie, he averaged 92 miles per hour on his fastball. But this year in spring training, he's consistently hit 95 to 96, even touching the high 90s with regularity. He struggled a bit with his control, but this uptick in velocity makes him an intriguing player to look out for. Okay, now let's talk about the hitters. As a whole, the group was average at best, both offensively and defensively. Simeon had a good season, but he dealt with a major slump to start the year as he hit only one home run in the first two months. However, you could also say between June 2nd and October 5th, he hit 25 home runs in 113 games with an OPS of 820. In this span, the only second basemen who were better than Simeon offensively were Altuve, McNeil, Neil and Jimenez, three all-stars. As for Corey Seager, if there's anyone who's due for some positive regression, it's him. And it's for one reason, the removal of the shift. In 2022, Seager experienced heavy shift rates and it affected him more than anyone else. According to Sports Info Solutions, they estimated Seager lost 25 hits to the shift. Even if those 25 hits were all singles, that's a notable increase in production. Also, he showcased a career high home run total, generally hit the ball hard, showed solid plate discipline, and played passable defense. Now, if only he could hit better on the road. Overall, these two had good seasons, but there's potential for both to improve in 2023. As for the rest of the hitters, they definitely need to improve their plate discipline, but there's still some good hitters here. Adolis Garcia proved his 2021 season wasn't a fluke. Nathaniel Lowe's breakout season led to a silver slugger. Jonah Heim stepped up big time with Mitch Garver on the IL, and now both these guys should find time in the starting lineup. There's a few young big leaguers I can mention too, but I want to focus on third baseman Josh Young. The Rangers' top prospect played 26 big league games last season, striking out a lot, but showcasing his power too with five home runs. Young represents the first wave of talent in a farm system that's built to supplement the major additions on the big league roster. This experiment doesn't work without some of these prospects turning into bona fide big leaguers. Although, seeing how nearly everyone on this list is projected to be called up in the next few seasons, there's a lot to look forward to if all goes well. But that's the thing, nearly everything must go well for this experiment to work. The last thing this team wants to be is like the Angels, a team that pays for aging big names without enough young talent to supplement the production. However, this is just one end in the spectrum of possibilities. Josh Young and the first wave of prospects could all succeed, and with how deep the Rangers farm system is, they could trade for established big leaguers too. Honestly, this could happen in 2023 with a hot start in the first half, but I think it's more likely they finish around 500. As for the Rangers experiment as a whole, the injury and regression risk can't be ignored. But it's also something you can't assume is going to happen. Ultimately, what matters is the Rangers have a long-term plan and fans have real reason to be optimistic about their team. Did they acquire big name free agents too soon into their rebuild? Maybe, but free agent classes don't have players like DeGrom, Seager, and Simeon very often. This front office capitalized on a unique opportunity to revamp their organization, but there's a wide array of potential outcomes. For now, we'll just have to wait and see what happens next. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did, and subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks for watching.